Thank you all for three wonderful days of uh, information sharing and discussion. I think it's been a fantastic workshop. I'm very glad we did it. My only regret is that uh, we were not able to do it in person, but I'm hoping that uh, if there is a follow-up, and I hope there will be a follow-up, uh, we will be able to do it in person. So very quickly, I have put together a general summary. Uh, if any of this is missing something you feel is very important, please put a comment in the chat to that effect so that we can capture it. And so on our first day, we had uh, several talks and discussions on current activities as well as anticipated activities of using mass spectrometry in radionuclide metrology. Uh, some of my takeaways from that was that there's an obvious interest in using mass spec, um, but it does seem to be really for a select community. I would say the 150 or so people who at one point or another joined this workshop are probably that community. On the other hand, uh, we do recognize that mass spec is potentially better than our usual radionuclide metrology technique. We saw some examples of how it can be more precise and how you can use lower activity samples. Again, this really depends on your application and what you're looking for. Our second day was very much focused on the addressing and talking about some of the technical issues. Uh, what can mass spec provide the radionuclide metrology community? And what does mass spec need in order to be useful to the radionuclide metrology? And that's when we really started about reference, talking about reference materials and how that will probably be a real, a really critical factor in going forward. Today, I was very happy to hear from many stakeholders talking about what the users need. It all boils down to sensitivity, specificity, and speed. So even if mass spec can help in uh, quick throughput, so you address speed, and certainly it's very sensitive. The specificity may not always be there. You we rely a lot on the differences in energy emissions in radioactive radio, radionuclide metrology techniques, uh, which is an extremely specific uh, approach. But still, sensitivity, specificity, and speed are, are key. Uh, we talked a little bit about the resources that are needed, uh, different data, half-lives, for example, reference materials, of course, for the actinides, um, for food, food and food-based matrices, for inorganics, for other matri matrix uh, type of material. And in general, and I'm going to read my, uh, my notes here, in general, it looks to me like there are two communities of stakeholders. You have the community, and most metrologists fall into this community, which really are looking at very low activity uh, for environmental tracking, for standards development, and for monitoring the environment. On the other hand, we have this other community which really need to have higher amounts because they're making decisions in the real world. So these are two communities that I think will have to come to a, a generalized approach eventually on how to best optimize the resources that are limited, but are available at the National Measurement Institutes and designated institutes. So where do we go from here? Um, our goal in the steering committee for this workshop is to pull together some documentation on the applications, the needs, potential uh, solutions to these things. Uh, I will be drafting a white paper summarizing the, and I will be asking Jackie and others to help write up little paragraphs summarizing the discussions um, to basically have a document capturing the workshop. Uh, we're also thinking about maybe eventually writing a paper for publication, but that will take a little bit longer. And I had pulled these notes together before we started very early this morning. For me, I have uh, as my last comment, if there's any interest in a follow-up workshop, but I think I just heard Jackie say, yes, there's an interest in follow-up workshop. So 
Uh, so I'm seeing that we have uh, some comments. Great. We'll capture those in our um, white paper. And anything else? Let me stop sharing. Let's see. Find the red one. Turn off my video. So we, yeah, so we have here from, let's start back. Uh, Simon says, will the outcomes of the workshop be reported to discussed at this year's ITRM conference? Yes, in fact, I will be giving a short presentation at the low level working group meeting, uh, trying to, um, ex you know, give a summary of what's been going on. And yes, there has to be a follow-up workshop, I agree. Uh, from Daniel, I think the role of isotope ratio mass spec measurements for radioactivity measurements should be tackled at some point. Yes, I agree. That will be reflected in the, um, the document that will eventually come out of this workshop. From Mark, Tyra, for mass spec, it is the number of atoms that matters. So for highly radioactive analytes, you may have an abundance of signal for counting methods, but far less for amounts in mass spec and vice versa for only slightly radioactive, oops, radioactive methods. So there's a balance between the two, but that is true. <laughs> yes, we know that's true. Begonia, will the outcomes of the workshop be reported? Yes, thank you for uh, reiterating that we will have this at the work at the ICRM meeting. Uh, anyone interested in participating in ICRM 2023, it will be held in Bucharest the last week of March. Uh, please search on Google or your preferred search engine, ICRM and the word metrology, and you will be able to get to the home pages and find out more about this year's meeting. <laughs>